Okay, so today's class, we will essentially continue exploring the double pendulum, but we'll do two new things. One is, we I'll show you how to use what is known as a finite state machine to basically create controllers, which do interesting things. Uh, then I will also show you how to uh, create a trajectory and then track that trajectory. Okay, so the motivation for this is, uh, if you want, say, for example, to swing the leg of a biped, then you want to probably set a trajectory and then you want the robot to move along the trajectory. But you may also want to switch what trajectories you choose to use in different parts of the swing. And that's what FSM does. It helps you to um, concatenate different controllers and join them in a seamless way. Okay, so for this particular exercise, we're going to use a different template. It's in the Mujoko folder. It's called template underscore write data two dot zip. So download that. Then we'll rename and call it DB pendulum underscore FSM. And then we'll make these three changes, which we always do. And then we'll go to the shell and uh, run the executable file and see if everything works fine. Okay, so I'm going to start doing that next. Now let's go to main.c. Here it is. And then rename uh, this template underscore right to db pendulum underscore fsm. Okay, that's the only change here. Next, let's open the make file. Okay, uncomment the right, the right uh, flags for your operating system. So for Mac, these are the ones I'll use. Then go to this root and rename that to tp underscore fsm. Okay, we don't need this, we can close it. Then the final change is either open run Unix or run Win, depending on your operating system, and then uh, give the path for DB Pendulum. Okay, that's it. Mujoko, and then my project, and then here I have put this folder DB Pendulum. Okay, now we can run the executable run Unix for Mac or Ubuntu. Okay, so this is exactly the same uh, pendulum we had you created for the last class, uh, except that I moved the support a little down so that one of the links penetrate the penetrates the ground. What we are trying to do is we are trying to simulate a swinging leg. And so this is, for example, if the robot is walking and you want to swing a leg and when you swing the leg, you want to avoid the leg from hitting the floor, which here is shown in red. So our start goal is shown the left and we end to end with the pendulum on the other side, right? It is to simulate a swing. The issue is that if we swing this like a single link pendulum where the blue and the, the blue pendulum is locked in place, then we will see that the blue uh, pendulum or the second link actually hits the floor and that would be a problem. So we want to avoid that. So what we have to do here is we want to essentially bend the leg or in this case, it becomes like a knee and, and bend it in such a way that it is able to um, avoid hitting the, the red floor and then swings to the end position. Okay, so that's what we are trying to achieve. We'll actually use the simulate in Mujoko in order to figure out what angles we want the pendulum to be in the intermediate position. And so that we can then use those positions and then we can use what is known as a finite state machine in order to uh, create these uh, behaviors. Okay. So we need to go two levels down and get to bin. 
and then we run simulate so i will drag and drop this file and then i'm going to open it up it's already okay so here is the pendulum file Okay, so now I'm going to start exploring this pendulum file to get those positions. Now, it's, it looks like it's in my best interest, it's my better off controlling the, the pendulum to go from, to start in the position which I shown earlier on the left. So what I do need to do is, I can only do that by changing the control. So what I'm going to do is define an actuator. In fact, I'll define a, a torque actuator, a position servo and a velocity servo for the green pendulum i'll do the same for the blue one and that way it will appear here and i can do those i can change the set angle in order to do what it, what i want it to do so let's set that up here just uncomment this code and right now it's set to joint one pin this is the first pendulum the green one it's set to torque control gear one okay so what i need to do is let me call this uh it's just such a big name. So P servo one, P servo one. Okay, and then I'll copy this three lines in here. And this is going to be my second joint. So pin two is where the second servo is. So this all looks good. I should call it a different name, but there will be a conflict. And then I'll call it servo two, P servo two. It let me ramp up the gains. So let me just put 110, 100 for the KP and 10 for the KD. Yes, right. Good catch. That's the problem. Okay, so now it should work fine. Thanks. Reload. So let's move the first link. No problem. And all the way to minus one. Okay, so we'll, we'll just hold it in that position. Uh, so this is going to be our initial position. So I'm just going to make a note here. Start, let's do it Q. I'll call that Q0 and Q1 for the two links. So Q0 is minus one, Q1 uh, is zero. And now let's go to the intermediate position where it should be it's a zero. And then we want to bend the knee, so <laughs> so that's minus one. It won't go beyond minus one, and you can change this actually in settings in the in simulate file. But let's assume that we want to, you know, maybe to one point five seven, which is uh, ninety degrees, and you can't really see it here because of this uh, the way simulator is set up. So I'm going to second intermediate position. I'm going to get it to zero and q1 equals minus 1.57 which is pi divided by two and then finally we want it to be straight knees and we want the position two to be say there so plus one so q1 is plus q0 is plus one and q2 is q1 is zero so last and we have Q zero is one. Q two. Q one is zero. Okay, so this is what I want. I wanted to start in this position, then go to this intermediate position, then end in this final position. Okay, so now let's with that let's see how to do this. So the the way I recommend doing this is through what is known as a finite state machine. Okay, so what is a finite state machine? It's a it's basically a machine which saves states and decides when to transition from one state to another. What I'm going to do is, uh, this is the start state, I'll call that hold state. After a certain time, and T hold is a parameter I'll define, let's say 0.5 seconds, I will, I will initiate the swing phase where it is going from 
the extreme position to the middle position. Okay, so that will happen uh, for some time T swing. Once it's in the intermediate position, I will transition to a new state machine called swing two, where it will go from the middle position to the end position. Okay, and that will happen over a time period of T swing two. So I'm, I'm just adding the swing two to this time. And then finally, when it's in the end state, I want it to hold on to that state. So I need to again have a position, a PD controller to hold it there. So my state machine has going to have is going to have four states: hold, swing one, swing two, and stop. What I need to do is define a variable which holds these states, and then initialize the state machine. That is, it will be initialized with this hold state. So next, I'm going to write code in um, in the main dot C. We shall do all these things. So let's do that. Before I start, let me just initialize this pendulum such that it is in the extreme left position. Okay, so first let me quit this, uh, simulate, let's go back to my project, and then db pendulum fsm. Okay. okay, so I need to set the position, so I'll go to main just before uh, just before maybe controller i can set the state q b q pose zero equals minus one so that was the state for the first link and second one i don't need to set it uh it's by default set to zero and that's what i want okay so if you run this now Okay, so it transitioned and came back to the vertical state and it came back because uh, I have a I have what is I have a, a PD controller which basically uh, sets the KP KV but it also sets the set point as zero that's why it came back but it did start there so I can take care of that in my state machine so let me now start programming the state machine so what I do like to do is I like to define all the states right in as global variables. So let me define state machine. So let's let's call the state machine as FSM. FSM stands for state machine. FSM state. Okay, so that's the variable which will keep track of the state. And I'm going to define the first state as FSM hold. And that one is going to have a variable zero. Now I've, def I've used define to define FSM hold equal to zero, but you could also say, you could also define it this fashion. You could also define as const int FSM hold equal to one, oh, zero, sorry. This is the same thing. It basically assigns to this variable hold the number zero. Okay, so I'll just use this way. Both ways are correct. Define FSM string one, that'll be state one. Define FSM string two and define FSM. It was stop. stop three. Okay, now the reason why I'm defining them with numbers is because eventually I want to deal with these numbers when I transition, but I don't really want to remember zero is FSM hold, one is FSM swing. I just gave them names, which is which are easier to remember. So we've got that. Now let's also define these times because for the state machine, you need these times. So uh, let's call them, well, const double t hold equals uh, 0.5. I'm just randomly choosing these values. Double t swing one. So it swings for one second, the first half, and then it swings for another. Uh, one second, the second half. You could change this anytime you want. I've put the variable constant, the qualifier constant here, because I don't want the values to change in the code. This is just like a security thing. Uh, you could also drop it, but this this makes it secure. It doesn't let new, anything in the code change the variable. Okay, now once we've defined these global variables, we always have to initialize the state machine. So what I did in this particular template file is I created a a block called init controller. So if you scroll down, 
you see that just above my controller, there is the unit controller. So we'll initialize a controller here. Okay. So in the initial state, we know that the pendulum is going to be in the extreme left position. And so we are going to set the FSM state to FSM port. Okay, that's all I need to do. Okay, now if you have other variables you want to set in the FSM, you're free to set them here. But this file, this init controller is called only once before the my controller is called. Okay, so let us um, let us try to write control code. The way I like to write an FSM is I write all the transitions in one place and I write all the uh, torque and control commands in another space. I like to call them actions. Okay, so I'll write all the transitions first and all the actions second. Okay, so what I want to be happening now is uh, I need to transition. So I need to here worry about all these transitions, these things in red. Okay, so what I do, well, if, if FSM state equals FSM hold. Okay, so I'm in this state. And then the time is greater than T hold. Then I need to transition to the next one, swing one. That's basically how I define the first transition. So let me uh, put that in code. So it'll be and T is greater than equal to t underscore hold, which I've already defined earlier as a global variable, then I need this to transition to FSM state equal to FSM swing one. Okay. Now it doesn't really know what this t is, so I better define it. Uh, so call double, or you know what, let's, we don't need to do that. We can just use the variable which is already available within the data, it's called the pointer to time. Okay, so that's the first transition. So this is taken care of. Now let's do this transition from swing one to swing two. So essentially it's basically copying this code and then changing this from FSM swing one. Uh, it should transition to swing two, but this condition now has to be based on being in there for time equal to hold plus T swing. So plus T swing one. Okay, so that's the second transition. The third transition is you want to go from swing two to hold and then you will do this when the time is okay so that case of takes care of this entire state machine transitions. Okay now let's do the actions. So what are actions is basically what exactly goes on within this state. So for example, when it's in hold state, it needs to hold on to a position, which I have actually written down earlier. So let's just uh, copy paste that. I wrote down these, these states. So we want to basically write these, these uh, transitions. Okay, so if, you are in FSM state equal to FSM uh, hold. So you're in the hold state, then you need to do something. If you are in FSM swing one, you need to do something and so on. Okay, so let's uh, think of writing the code here. Now, uh, remember that what I'm trying to do now is just do a hold onto this state. So the position should be minus one and zero. Okay, now, if you go back to the pendulum, you'll see that I've specified six actuators, three for pin the first link and three for the second link. Um, so when I try to do use control CTRL, 
it will be doing torque control for the first actuator it will be doing position control for the second one velocity for the third and so on so these numbers starts from zero so ctrl zero is torque ctrl one is some position ctrl two is velocity and so on in order to do position control i only need to set ctrl one to whatever i want it to be q0 and then ctrl uh, so zero, one, two, three, four. So CTRL four to be whatever I want for the second link. So I only have to deal with CTRL one and CTRL four. So let me just do that. So the CTRL one equals this should be whatever Q zero is, and the CTRL four equals Q one. Okay, what remains is to find Q0 and Q1. So this, this is my Q0 and Q1. Okay, and then I've not really defined this. So I'm going to define them as doubles. Q0, Q1. Okay, so now I can just take this with the swing. So here I want to go from this state to the intermediate state. So Q1 will be zero, Q2 will be minus 1.57. I need to put a semicolon here. Then I can take this, paste it here. So this would be finally one and zero. So one, zero. Then the final state, I just want to hold on to the state. So nothing change I can send it to you a chat. Okay, that looks oh it better go back to uh why did it go back? It should have held its position on the right side. Uh -huh. Uh, yeah. Can you check your transitions in your mic controller? I think your last FSM state should be to stop uh, instead of yeah. Stop. Good catch. That must be the case. Perfect. Now that we've got that working, uh, let me show you how to break this. I'm going to break this uh, system, and this is how I'll do it. Uh, if you go to pendulum and then instead of saying contact disable, it's stay to enable, okay? So the floor was switched off. So we do not know if it actually cleared the floor or not. So if you just go to uh, pendulum and just say enable contact and we run this, you see what you get. Okay, so look, it doesn't really uh, work. It just hits the ground. Let me try again. Right? This is not what you want this system to do. You want it to clear the, the floor. Also, the other issue is that here you're moving the legs so quickly from one point to another point, and that's not how people swing their legs, or that's not how you want robots to swing their, uh, uh, their joints. Right? You want them to move slowly. And this is where the next comes the next part, which is the trajectory generation. Okay, so let's do the next part. So, uh, Right now I did what is known as a set point control, where I went from one position to another position as quickly as possible by using a PD control. But most times we don't want to do that because that's leads to jerky motion. So if you want to go from point one to point two, so let's say from zero to one, and this is Q is the angle here, then one way of defining a trajectory is to draw a straight line between those two points. So in this case, time is in the X axis and there's a straight line. So what's the equation of a straight line? Well, it's A0 plus A1t, where A0 and A1 are constants. What remains to be done is we need to find A0 and A1 such that the initial position, the final position are met. So what we do here is we define what are known as boundary conditions. So in, the case, in this case, let's say that we want the joint to be at Q0 initially at time T0. And then we want, want it to be at Qf at time Tf. So once we put in these values, we have two 
equations and we have two unknowns q's a0 and a1 and so we can solve for those two unknowns so a little bit of algebra and you can do this math and get a solution for q as a function of time where these things are now constants because you'll be specifying q0 qf t0 and tf and now one thing to note here is because of the form we assumed for q a linear function of time the velocity is going to be a constant okay so that has some repercussions because you'll start with from zero you'll go all the way to some speed and then you'll keep that speed till you reach the positions so that can have some bad bad uh, effects and that is a bad way of parameterizing the curve so the way to avoid this is to specify a curve such that the initial speed and the final speed is zero in addition to meeting this q0 and qf so for that what we need to do is we need to define a cubic profile okay so q of t is a0 plus a1t plus a2t square plus a3t cube here we have four unknowns a0 all the way to a3 now we can specify four boundary conditions uh, two would be for angles so q at time t0 equals q0 actually this should be this is my bad this is not t is equal zero it's t equals t0 uh, it's q0 then it's at t equal tf it's qf and this is again not zero but t0 it's zero so it's the velocity initial is zero velocity final is also zero so that gives us four um, conditions or four equations and we can solve for the four constants using those four equations right so if you solve for those constants you get a0 a1 a2 a3 as follows okay so this is something which i churned out in matlab by using the symbolic toolbox you don't really need to do these calculations by hand they get very complex as you increase the dimension so using this profile so once you have a0 a1 a2 a3 all you do is substitute in this equation and that's how you get q and then you take the derivative of q q dot and then you'll have a different expression without the a0 you can put the a1 a2 a3 and get what the velocity is and that's pretty much what i did for some uh, start and end position i started with q equals 0 and 1 uh, and the velocity was 0 at the initial and final and this is the kind of profile you see so when you use this profile you get a smooth q which is not a line anymore you get a smooth q dot starts and ends at zero but then the issue is that when you take the second derivative of uh, uh, q or acceleration you see that there's a discontinuity at the start and end so what people do is they usually take a fifth order sorry uh, yeah fifth order polynomial which will have not four but six, not four but six constants and those additional two constants comes to the fact that you want to impose the acceleration is zero at the start and end okay but for today what we'll do is we will not really go to a fifth order we'll just restrict ourselves to a third order profile and then use this to swing the robotic leg from start to the intermediate position using a third order profile and then intermediate to the final position again using a third order profile okay so that's my goal to put this in the code and then make it swing along I'm thinking that maybe I should do this with uh, torque control. So let me not do this with uh, uh, position control. Like I've said it, I'll do it with torque control. For that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first get rid of the position control <coughs> in the code. I will not do it through the XML. So I could potentially change this to zero, zero, which will get rid of the position velocity servo, but I'll do it in code. And I'm, I have basically put down uh, the code you we developed for the pendulum, the single link pendulum over here. So if you want to switch the position servo off, all you need to do is you tell it the actuator number and you need to set the gain to be zero, right? So I'm just going to now show you how to use the initialization to get rid of the position servo. So let's copy this. So remember, it's the same as the velocity servo. We'll have actuator number and KV. And I go to the initialization. And there I'm going to pass m. I need to pass the actuator number. Now we need to go to the pendulum.exml to find the actuator number. So in this case, we're looking at the position servo, which is sitting here. So that's actuator zero. This one is actuator one. So actuator one is a position servo. I need to have the KP gain to be zero. 
then for just wait one time. So let's fit this to zero. So the zeroth actuator, sorry, first actuator, and that should be set to zero. Set the servo. Okay, so let's do that for the velocity servo. Otherwise, we'll have velocity control. So copy this file, change this to velocity. And again, if you go to this double pendulum, you see that that's uh, the third one, zero, one, two. So this will have the index of two. So two, change that to zero. Set D servo one to zero. And then, you know, what we can do is we can just copy this and set it for the, the remaining two. So now the numbers for the last two are, so zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So four and five should be set to zero. Four and five. Okay. So if you want to check this, we just run the code and you'll see nothing happens. It really swings like a free pendulum. And then stop because of the collision. Okay, so that works. So let's now change this to, uh, let's go back to the code where we did uh, all this. And we'll change this to uh, talk control. Okay, so now before I actually go to this point of implementing a finite state machine, I'll just revert to a, a talk control and then I'll start doing that change. So let's define these chains KP and KV. So KP is I was set to 1000 and 100. So that's just the same thing. 1000 and KV equal to 100. And then we know that these are not effective anymore. So let's just set a talk controller. But now it's the actuator number zero. So this is a talk control. So I set that to minus KP times. So this is a, so I need to take the first position minus q0 minus kv times uh, d q well zero so that is my position servo and then i need to do the same thing for the second show actuator so the second actuator sits zero one two and three so it's actuator number three so i need to set this to three and then this will be one and one. Okay, so now I just need to keep copying this. And the work has already been done once and now because they've been set. There's something else I forgot here. Actually, this should be one. It should be one. one. Okay, so now you should see that this behaves very similar to uh, the earlier scenario where we had a P position servo and velocity servo. Okay, so let's check this out. And if you disable the floor, which I can do quickly. It will behave like what we had uh, earlier. Okay, that looks good. So let's go back and enable this. Okay, so now that's now since we're in talk control, all I now need to do is in this state, I need to generate a trajectory or set the trajectory here. And then I need to set generate. So let's just do that. For this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a function to generate a trajectory. So remember that, if, let's see. So what I need to do here is I need to basically evaluate these constants for each of those trajectories from start to intermediate, intermediate to final. And you can see that these constants depend on the initial and final. And the initial and final time, initial final queues depend on the states. So I need to 
basically do this two times, one for the first half, one for the second half. So I better off just writing a function which will take care of finding these constants depending on T0, TF, Q0, and Q. So that's what I'm going to do. Now remember that Q0 and QF are going to be uh, two states. Q0 will have two states. One would be for Q0 and one will be for uh, Q1. So let me create a new function here. Maybe just above init controller. Let's call it generate trajectory. And the main inputs to, to it would be T0. Yes. And then I'm going to uh, call this Q underscore zero, not to confuse it with Q0, which I've defined. And since I'm going to pass two states, one for, so this is the initial state, but I need the state for the first link, that is the position of the first link and the position of the second link, it will have two variables. Same for QF. Okay, now I wrote a bit of code. I just need to take these values and plug them in the generate project. And I did that ahead of time just to save me some time. So I'm just going to copy paste that part and I'll share it via chat. So this is the part which I need to do. And I need to do this for uh, to find the constants. Now there are two constants, one for uh, Q0, one for Q1, right? And that's why I have a zero i, where i goes from zero to one. So let me share this with you in the chat. So you can just copy paste the entire function as it is somewhere in the code. Just ensure that you put it before main. Otherwise, it'll, sorry, do it before my control. Otherwise, it'll give you an error because you're going to use these generate trajectory in my controller. And if you define after my controller, then it's going to say it's undefined. That we have this, we need to call this. Now, as I said, we only need to invoke these, compute this, uh, this uh, constants in the beginning, right? Once we have this constant, we just need to be able to use them. So uh, what I'll do is I will actually define these constant as global variables. We've not so far defined them anywhere, right? So it'll give an error. And the reason I'm going to define this global variables because I will be using them in um, in uh, my controller in, in in such a way that uh, well I'm not going to pass this I'm not passing this back via generate trajectory back so I don't have access to them in my controller so if I want access to them the best way to do it is to just define them as global variables so I'm going to define these as global variables go up and on top you can define a zero two. I'll just go ahead and initialize them. Zero, A1, two. A2, two, two. and A3, two. Put in the chat. Okay, now we need to work with my controller. Okay, as I said, we need to define them only once. So let's initialize them in this place where we are just beginning to transition to FSM swing one. So go to FSM swing one in, uh, in my controller. That's where the transitions are. And then we'll say generate trajectory. I need to give the initial time, so which is T hold. I need to give it the final time. And I need to give the initial state and the final state. So let's call that Q. And so zero Q underscore F 
which I need to define. So Q underscore zero is double two things in it. Uh, is we'll also have uh, we'll we'll also be we'll have two uh, two things in it, right? Q zero and Q one. Okay, so the first thing I do is I need to set these. So I'm going to reuse this again. So let me just copy paste in here. So initially I want to set Q zero zero equals. So it starts with minus one and zero. So minus one. then q1 equals 0. So this is basically setting the initial state, which is this. Next, I need to set the final state, f, so that we have 0 component would be this line. So 0 and minus 1.57. That will take care of this. So once this is defined, it's going to go here in that function. It's going to find the constants a0 through a4, and they will be available for me to use in the code as needed. Okay, so I need to do this on one more time for the swing to so I copy paste. So now I need to go from this. This is my start state. 0, minus 1.57. And the end state is one and zero. So one. Okay. So again, it goes to generate trajectory and create those creates those constants. So this is remember is always executed only once because this is where the transitions are set. So once the transitions are set, once the constants are evaluated, when this enters the state, I only need to now find a way to use them. So I need to use them here because that's swing one. And then I need to use them uh, in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to uh, write this formula from from the notes. So Q of t is assuming that a zero a one are computed, then I can find Q of t by taking this expression. And then if I want to find the velocity, I just do derivative of this, which is kind of simple. Again, differentiate that in, the, in your head. So I'm to do that. So Let's go to FSM swing one and uh, let us define, we need another variable now for the reference. Okay, so let's call that double Q ref zero. And um, be two things and then u ref uh, oh, I don't my bad it should be right here so I won't need these variables anymore because I'm not going to do set point controls I'm just going to drop this this here and I just need to define them now so how do I define them? Well, I need to, uh, let's say, double, let me call a new variable, uh, call that, uh, yes, I don't know what, let me just, let me just do it like this, for i equals zero, i less than two, i plus plus, q ref i equals, and this is going to be this formula. So a zero times t plus so a zero plus a one times t plus a two times t times t plus a three times t. Okay, that's the position. And then if you want to find the derivative, it's u ref. Uh, that is going to be so derivative of a zero is zero. Derivative of a one t is a one. Derivative of a two t square is two times a two t, and the derivative of three a three t cube is going to be three times a three t square. Okay. Now, remember that a zero is not uh, a single number; it's basically an array. So I need to access 
the first part oh, sorry the ith part so that this will loop through over the, both the indices and then give me q ref q ref okay so once i have got q ref and u ref all that remains to be done is i need to do position derivative control with it so this will be q ref zero and then this will be minus u ref zero u ref um, zero and one and then minus u ref I think this looks good. Okay, so the same thing has to be repeated here. Come this. Okay, uh, nothing changes. The only thing which will change is these constants will now be new constants because remember that when you before you before you enter FSM swing two, it will be calling this function here to set those constant accordingly. Uh, I think I might have made a mistake here. I have not really done this properly. This should be t swing one. It's a start, and then this should be t hold plus t swing one plus t swing two. So first one goes from t hold to t hold plus t swing. It should be one, and then uh, it goes from t hold plus t swing one to t hold plus t swing one plus t swing two. Okay, I'll send this code in just a bit, but let me just quickly check to see if this works. Okay. I is undefined and then T is undefined. Okay, easy to fix. Let's go on top, int I, okay, and then double T, but then T, there's no variable called T, so I need to uh, so I can either use D time or I can just define it here, T equals D. So hopefully that takes care of the errors. Okay, that looked okay, but it still hits the floor and that seems like a problem with our choice of the angles. So I'm going to just go and change these angles till it works. So right now it's set to the initial angles are right here in the, so uh, zero to minus 1.5, so how, how about we change this to minus two? And when you do it, you need to also do the change here, right? otherwise it'll be, it won't really look good. When it animates, okay, it still hits. Yes, I'm going to maybe do uh, slightly ahead. Instead of going mid swing, I'm just going to make it go 0.5, a little forward. Okay, that looks good. Didn't collide. Try it again. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So it basically can move and move smoothly without colliding. And so, so this gives you sort of a leverage on how you can tune the the numbers that swings the way you want to. So, my last thing I wanted to show you, and this is something which uh, I think uh, will be eventually useful. That is, once you do something in Mujoko, you you always want to see how this uh, things work by doing some animations and some plots, right? So uh, I actually have a routine here which saves data to a file called data.csv, and right now if you open it up, it only has a single thing, which is time, because by default. Uh, set up to save only time, but I'm going to show you how you can save the, so we'll save the positions of both the links. Uh, we'll also save the, the reference positions, and then we can make a plot of the position versus time and the position reference versus time to see how the tracking is going on. So let's do that. Okay. Most of this is done for you in the code. You just have to tell it what you need to say. So before I um, 
do that, I need some uniformity here, which I don't have in terms of the reference. So if you see here, I have a reference variable, uh, but I don't have a reference here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify a reference. Just like this, I'm going to specify a reference. I'm going to eliminate these constants. Then define them. So let's do one thing. Let's uh, let's make these as global variables because then we will use these global variables and save them in a different file. And so we want to talk between different files. So I'm going to copy this rather uh, and then save it somewhere outside. I mean, so it's this way it's accessible by multiple functions. So once we've done that. I just need to define these for the two states where we did not really have a trajectory. So let's go back to my controller. So line 258 approximately. And then let's define this. So QREF. So QREF zero equals, so this is the initial state. Um, so I'll be, sorry, it's the initial state, it's the current states, so the reference command. In this case, there's no reference trajectory, it's just a set point. So I just need to set this to minus one, q ref one equals zero. And then u ref is, by the way, both of them are zero because there's no velocity. So u ref equals zero. Okay, so then I need to accordingly change these numbers here. q ref zero, u ref zero, sorry, one. Now you could potentially put minus u ref zero, u ref one, but really it's zero, so it really doesn't affect anything. So, so q ref. Okay, so with this, I can just copy paste this bit in my last state, which doesn't have a QREF. Let's go here and then copy this. And then here we want the uh, initial to be plus one and zero. So we want to change. Okay, so first let's see if this runs. Okay, no problem. Look fine. Let's try to now ex save this data in a CSV file and then go from there. So if you go scroll up to uh, init save data and save data. So what we'll do is we'll give this function, these uh, variables names and all those names should come in save data. So let's say that if we want to save Q1 first, so Q0 first, then Q1, uh, then Q0 ref, and then Q1 ref. Okay, having done that, let's now save them. So F printf, percent F. Uh, percent f percent f percent f so there are four so i have four percent f's and then those would be d equals zero d equals one and then i need to save the reference one so q ref zero q ref one so this is why i was defining them as global variables that i can access them in this folder without so this function without having to pass them through the function okay and then thing which is missing here is i need to put a comma 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 and so it turns out that you shouldn't put a comma on the last one because then it gives an error on matlab when you read it so there should be a comma except for the last one that's that was the error i was getting last uh, I think it was two classes back and I figured out after class. Okay, so if everything looks works fine, then you should get this data in the data.csv file. So let's run this. It's an error. Maybe Q post.
Okay, so once it's done, open data.csv. This is what you get if you open it. Uh, Okay, there is some problem here. Q doesn't look like it's changing. Everything is minus one. Yeah, so it's not changing. There's some uh, some problem. Well, we can we can actually run that file if you go to open MATLAB and then if you open main.m. Change. Okay, so this appears in a different window for me. So this is uh, the five things which are plotted on separate tables. So first is time. You do not want that. So Q zero, ref. Well, that looks okay to me. Q zero ref Q one. Q, Q1 ref. Oh, they look fine. Okay, so what I'm going to do is this is we want to really plot Q0 and Q0 ref on this on a, on the same plot, right? We don't want it to be separate plots so that we can compare the performance. So what you can do is uh, here it's set to print each one on a different uh, figure. So I'm going to change that. So there are the best way to check this is to look at this array. So we already ran this. So if I query for M, I see it's 20,040. That must be the number of rows. Okay, so there are 20,000 time steps here. Then I can check N. That's five. That's basically the five variables. So I'm doing this figure from one to five. This is a five plots. Now, if I want to change this from plotting just that variable, that is x plus y, the first variable, remember, is time. So what I'm going to do is comment this out and want this. Plot. That is time, because the first index. And then the second one is, we know it is the position. So it's going to be 2. And then let's put it with red. And then I want to plot the reference. So that should be against time. Okay, now the reference, which is the velocity. It's no fun. Oh, there it is. Okay, so first one is time, second one is position. Third one is Q1, and so we want to plot this against this, right? Same plot. So it's one, two, three, four. So one, two, and four have to go on the same figure, and then three and five has to go on the same figure. So two and four with, let's say, blue dash dot line or dot 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 line. And let's call this figure one subplot. One, one, blue dotted, and then uh, let's say X label, right? Y label. So if you want a name Q, you can use this to get the name. So let me just try this out. It's so that basically takes the name from the first row, that's the header row. But here we wanted to take the name of the of this one. Let's just put two here. Okay, let's check if this works, and then I can do it for the second one. Okay, this is what I get. It's almost lined up top of each other. Uh, just change the line width. To hold. You can barely see it, but it's, it's basically on top of each other, so it's it's hard to see. It's going to doing a good drop job uh, tracking. So let's just copy this. 
and then uh, subplot to come one, two, and then same thing, but now we need to do three and five. And this will be the third variable for the header. Okay, so when you run it, you get this. So for example, Q1 starts with zero, goes to minus two, comes back to zero. If you want, you can put a 11. Actual rest. And do the same thing. Uh, yeah, I this is what I need to do. Dash dot. You can barely see the dash dot. So I need to change this line width to this one actually. So this will make it slightly more visible than what I had. This. Okay, this is slightly better. So you can see that it's tracking perfectly. Now we can make it a little bit worse by just going to uh, changing the KP and KD gain. So if you go here and then choose, see the KP, where is the KP? I said, I think set it to 1100, it's a little bit excess. It's just 110. So now it's uh, lower the gains. And so what you see is, uh, okay, now here's one thing I can show you, which is you don't need to really go here, type run Unix, then it'll create this data.csv. And then you go to MATLAB and then you open the plot window. You can actually run this run Unix right through MATLAB and that way it'll save you time. So here's what you can do. So in MATLAB, first you want to execute the files. So what you'll do is right here, we'll, we'll call run Unix. And since this main.m is sitting right in the same folder, it's all convenient. So what I'm going to do is the command is, you see the command to write a code. So run a shell command within MATLAB is to say system and then the command name. System and then command name. So in this, this case, the command name is Run Unix. Okay, so this will actually run the whole thing, but you will see the output here. So if you made it print something in shell, it will actually appear here. So let's run this. Okay, now the gains are part of the problem because the gains were small. Uh, you did not really get good tracking. Okay, so I need to ramp up the gains. That didn't work. Let's go back here and I don't know, maybe change it to. 220. So again, run. Okay, it still hits. So it's, I think it did not, it's actually, I have to save it. Maybe it did work because I had not saved it. Let's try it again. I broke my clip. Okay, I need to. Oh, it's pause. Okay. No, I can't quit it. I need to maybe reopen my clip. I'm almost done. Okay, now let's reopen my tab.
Yeah, it still get stuck. Okay, then it generated the files in a different window, but here are the files. So you can see that it's tracking and then it just doesn't do a good job because of the collision. So, you know, I probably have to increase the gains those. So back to, let me go to 550. And so it does. Okay, that's good. And then you wait for it to give the plots. So the plots look good. Anyway, so this is a way in which you can run Unix uh, or shell commands right in MATLAB, just system and the command name. 